Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome to you to the Yashar University online seminar activity today. Mr. Rune Pierre will present a lecture titled Working Spaces for Sustainable and Feature-Oriented Learning in the Digitalized World. Before his presentation, I would like to introduce Mr. Pierre. Rene Pierre was born on 1964 in Aachen, Germany. He graduated from University of Trier, Department of Interior Architecture. Uh, he worked uh, at Hermann Birk firm as an interior architect between 1991 and uh, 92. He founded René Pierre Architecture in Stuttgart in 1993. In uh, 2000, Shimbai plus Pierre partnership uh, was founded in 2014, he was selected one of the best interior architects of the year in Germany for the Insider Award of the magazine AIT. He worked uh, as a teaching professor at HFT Stuttgart between 1917 and uh, 18. He also studied uh, at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas in the United States for uh, a one year uh, as an uh, exchange uh, program partner. He has been a member of the board architects chamber Baden-Württemberg uh, as representative for the interior architects since, 19, since 2019. He has been a delegate of the ACIA, a member of the working group on the update of the charter for the training of interior architects in Europe since 2019. Uh, now I am giving the word Mr. Pierre for his presentation. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Pierre, uh, for joining us and for this seminar. And uh, the word is you. Thank you very much, Professor Palicia. Um, I um, I'm really really happy to to be here today and uh, say Merhaba Izmir. To all of you, I'm unfortunately not able to speak the, the lecture in Turkish when uh, I would like to, but there are too many languages on the world, you cannot speak them all. Um, starting with uh, the lecture, I just want to introduce a little bit of our office, Schienbein and Pia. We are open up for interior architecture and we are having our office in Stuttgart, but we're working everywhere. So when you see the list, we worked in Egypt, China, in France, in French Polynesia, which was the most, the furthest away. It was once around the earth and uh, in Greece, in Italy, in Morocco, and so on. We never worked to Turkey, even if it's one of my, my lifetime dreams to uh, build a hammam, a traditional hammam. My thesis work was uh, hammam, and uh, I still love the, the way the bath is introduced to every culture of, the culture of contemplation in every country of the world is one of my favorite um, faculties. So starting the lecture, I want to have two prefaces. The first is, examine new, York, new work. So when we talk about new schooling concepts, you have to start first with new work. So what is new work about? At first, you have a co-creation aspect. So what is co-creation in the, in the other side as a creation in the other means? So co-creation is when people are really working together on one subject. It's not that one is doing that and the other is doing that and then they meet. No, they have the same process in working. So what is another task about new work? So what we have experienced right now, I'm sitting in my office in Stuttgart, so you see my office, no one's there because they are all in home office. So working anywhere is one of the major issues of today. So you can sit everywhere and you can work. So what does it mean for workplaces is what we see in the future. New work is also transdisciplinary. It is very important that we have the opportunity 
to share our knowledge. So that's why I'm so happy to, uh, to give this lecture today because this is shared knowledge to remote parts of the world. And um, so I can be a part of your thinking with my thoughts and you can use these thoughts in your own thinking. And when you share it also with other disciplines in a very, very broad level, then knowledge is spread in another way and in a, in a brighter way than it was before. And of course, transdisciplinary also needs a transcultural um, work. So everyone is bringing his own heritage. Everyone is bringing his own um, historic background and um, his cultural background and uh, his language background. And that's why it is so important to use all these knowledges to bring it together and share. So coming to the project Easy Lab, the name Easy comes from the street where the building is um, situated, is the Easy Street. The task was to create working spaces for sustainable and future-oriented learning in a digitalized work, a world. Um, what does it meant for us? So we were invited to get into a pitch of three agencies, um, interior architecture agencies by the government of Hamburg. And they asked for, for this. So no one really knew before what, what comes out of this project because there is no um, examples already on, this, on the market for, for this type of, uh, of learning. So we needed to have at first a theoretical approach. It helped me to be part of the work group for the ECIA charter. And one of the key elements of the charter was that interior architecture is about the relationship we have to the human made spaces we live in and use through the courses of our lives. So this is a really, really basic um, definition that we as interior architects create relationships. So when you remember new work is about co-creation, collaboration. So interior architecture has to enhance, foster these human relationships in the means of learning. So to introduce new work into old schools, interior architects need to bring pedagogical strategies together with architectural psycholistic analysis. So this is one example of transdisciplinary approach. So an interior architect has to know about the pedagogical strategies and he has also to know about the architectural psychology. So what does a room do with us? And what does a room have to do with the learners inside and how has this been brought together. And this is what I call scientification of our profession, so that we are not in the trap to say our interior architects are the ones for the nice surfaces and the nice colors and the nice textiles. No, we are the creators of social relationships. And this is a very, very strong motor of our profession. To create a room, one has to be aware that there is a perception of a room determined by three layers of space. Whenever you enter a room, you have the means of three layers. At first, you have a mental space layer. So this is all your memories you have about a space. So you know how the grandmother's kitchen looked like. You know how your old school looked like. You know how a mosque looked like. So this is, this is all the memories of space you have in your mind. 
then of course, as I said before, interior architects are creating social spaces. So whenever two people met together, it is a social space. And of course, we have to be the masters of the physical space. So we have to be aware of what is the floor, what is the wall, what is the ceiling, what is the light, what is the acoustics. So these are the elements to create the physical space, to interact with others, to create a social space and to fulfill the interaction of memory and actuality. So be aware of this. School is a social place perceived through all our memories about school. So when we now have to change our mind, change the mindset about the school, because digital learning context is something which was not before. Schools theory about building schools is maybe 100 years old, but the target of using digital technology in learning is now. So we cannot rely on the past ideas of how schools are built. So that's why we as the interior architects has to disrupt the way schools are built. One of the, the favorite guys for me in the theory of schools is Mr. Karl Richard Montag. He is a, is a philanthrope and uh, he founded the Montag Foundation. And um, he wanted to bring the learner's perspective into the core of school's building. So the core business of the school is learning and not teaching. So this have to be very, very aware in your thoughts that learning is the, the, the key of a school. And learning is most effective when it is understood as an active and interactive process from the learner's perspective. So the learner's perspective is what gives us the guidelines for school building. So now we enter the project, Easy Lab, Easy Street, and it was an adaptive reuse of an old school building, which is over 100 years old. Getting inside, you see, I see my hand running here. So you have these old school rooms, three of them. Then you have this teacher's room and you have like a store here and you have a working area here. So the, the, the children, the pupils enter one, two, three classrooms. Now we broken it up, all these, these closed rooms and created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different learning settings. And of course, we created a threshold space. We will see in the, in the lecture now, the definition of all these spaces. So that's why I will not introduce them by detail right now, but also, but then in every step. Just once again, you change your mind in, your, in the threshold space enter the communication space, find your way in the performative space, you have the thinking space, you have the working space, you have the holodeck virtual space, and of course you have a green space. Getting inside, change your mind, thinking about that. If you think the way you have always thought, you will act the way you've always acted. If you act as you've always acted, you will achieve what you've always achieved. So if you got more, you have to think different. This is a very, very nice quote by Albert Einstein. Think different. So change your mind, the threshold space. When you enter a building, 
every building, when you enter a room, every room, you have a moment of threshold. So being not inside, but also left outside. And this moment is a very critical moment when entering a secret building. So you have to change your mind from an outside everyday work and then you enter a secret space. So the threshold gives you the moment of changing your mind, changing your mindset, changing your mood. And this is created through a per, a per let's say, projection box. So we created this box and uh, we had a, a projector up here and now you can create content as a virtual content on the physical projection box. So we have in our render just the zero and one as a symbol of digitalism, but in reality, we project their works being done in the in the lab and um, information out of the lab for the ones getting in so you have the learning types you have the opportunities you have movies you have information about everything around this laboratory of learning so you see it here again the box you see this this was in the in the competition also an idea to have our own cards or an own uh, chip to to enter the lab and um, to create your own digital learning settings. So it is worked right now, but we will not have like the the slot here. It is just that you have your key card and with the key card, you, you have access to the different uh, areas and the different technology inside. I have, I have no real photo of that um, because um, the, the work is still in progress. So um, uh, there is not a, not a real content for that. So sorry, um, you have to start with the render by now. So I just want to want to see I want to show you the um, different installations in the area. So you see here the spot where the projector is to create the projection angle. So you have another projector here um, creating the movie uh, area or the video area. You have uh, different um, light board here, um, uh, smart board here. You have. Um, here another smart board you have here a wall faced projector and you have of course here the machinery for the light board and the podcast uh, production here you have small screens but this is all what you will see in the coming slides it's just to show how many sockets we created here because here are the, the first uh, coming in. People will sit here and charge their phones and charge their um, computers. We have here a very, very special socket because there is the management for loading of all the small computers, handheld computers, they are in use in the lab. So the first you enter when you go over the threshold is the space called, hello, welcome, the communication space. This communication space is created like a kitchen set. So remember the, the mental space idea. So what is the first sites you have by a kitchen? It is communication at its best. So why all the good parties end in the kitchen? Because the kitchen gives you the right setting for the best communication possible. So that's why we created a cross shape um, furniture where you have the coffee machine, the digital 
um, a dressed coffee machine, uh, a refrigerator, and some storage. Then you have here the um, handhelds, tablets in a charging position. You have uh, acoustic HUD above it to create a good um, talking atmosphere in the means of acoustic absorption. You have here the desk with all the sockets underneath and this is like the existing very nice windows where you look on Isa Street with the trees up there. What is the, oh, let's, let's go with it. No, better this is. Um, what is the, the key of the learning issue in this area? So it is self-directed learning. Self-directed learning describes the active role of the learner in the learning process. He has to plan the learning process on its own responsibility, set his own goals, activate his previous knowledge, choose its own learning content, and can work on its own speed. So when you keep this in mind, it is a pedagogic professor, Mr. Nigemann, who set up these quote, that self-directed learning is what we want to achieve. So that's why we have this box here and these boxes out here. Here is all the learning material you can, you can imagine from physical stuff to digital stuff. And you can choose whatever you like for your day and you put it in a container and this container moves with you through the area. Just another set, you see here the drawers, you see here the coffee machine, you see the containers, you see the material bar. So this is how it looked like uh, in the drawings. And this is how was the latest uh, photograph I was asked the uh, the um, project group in Hamburg to shoot photos for me. So it's dark outside. So they shot it for me. You see the, the light. Um, I would come to it when we go to the, to the bibliotheque or to the library. Um, I will talk about the light as well. So you see the, the threshold space, how it is moved into the side. You have the material bar and you have a smart board which is used like a Kanban board. You know, Kanban board is an expression used by Toyota in Japan. It just means that once you want to work, you set up a program for your working issue and you work from one top to the last top uh, bottom. And when the first is finished, you start the second. So it's a very strategic way of working. And this is prepared digitally on this smart board that everyone entering the day news, okay, this is what we want to achieve today. These are the different levels we want to achieve today. And it's like a open schedule for work. Coming to the coffee. So this was a very, very issue. We had a participation um, project before. So the teachers were asked, uh, the schooling managers were asked, the, the pupils were asked, the students were asked, everyone was asked. And one of the main issues they want to achieve is when we have a communication area, we need a coffee machine. So the compliance policy of a government in Germany is very, very high level. So it is not allowed to use tax money, which is the investment of a school, to buy coffee. So how can we achieve that coffee is served? So before the, the ideas we brought up, it was only possible to install a box. The box has a brewer, the box has a coin slot and plastic um, cups. So you went there putting your coin and a very bad coffee in a bad cup comes out. 
what was the means of, of this coffee machine? It is an ex-territorial way of making coffee. So everyone puts his own money and gets his own coffee and it's not related to the school or tax money. So in a digital world, we can control it in a completely different way. You see here the, the ad of the, of the company providing this um, technology and you have a perfect, really, really perfect coffee machine. It is expensive, but in Hamburg we have Grow, um, large roasteries. So we got a cross partnership, cross marketing partnership that they invest in the machine and get the money back by the um, coffee uh, served and the coffee uh, taken through a digital payment. So you can pay with your Apple Watch, you can pay with your smartphone, you can pay on location online with a with a tablet and of course you can store your own favorites and the coffee is served on your own favorites the coffee machine is self-cleaning so the the nozzles are cleaned by themselves after each process so you don't need any uh, maintenance until uh, the regular um, large cleaning circles and um, refilling circles of coffee and stuff. So this was this was a very very issue to to get the coffee right into the right spot, but thanks to digital technology we got it done. So the next space will be the performative space, thinking about the. Art of interconnected thinking. This was an uh, expression by Frederick Wester in 1999, that how you learning, there are different types of learning. The ones they need to see, the others they need to listen, the others they need to perform. So, and the best is to do at least both at one time. So when you want to learn a new language, sing. So you listen, you perform. So these are the means of broadening the lines in your brain to get a better learning. So for the ones they want to perform, they we create the performative space. You see this green floor and the green floor is not just a, an image of, um, of this graphic. It is actually a green screen floor. So it comes from television broadcast or movie making that you have the green screen to create these movies or to create these broadcasts on television and the news as you know them. So sitting somewhere and uh, having the best background as possible. So if I had a green screen behind me, I could do the very, very fine presentation from everywhere. Now, the, the software of Zoom and Teams and others, they created some different backgrounds by their own. When you had the, your green screen behind you, the, the elements of, of your, brain, of your uh, face will be more perfect than if you got such a heterogen um, background as I in my office. So, what is the green screen about? So you have a floor and you have a wall and you have a round corner. So that's it, you get no horizontal line. So when you want to pick out this person out of the, out of the, the reality and put it into a virtuality, then it's best made. Of course, this performative space has a, a lighting as you have a show lighting, has different screens for projection and have these niches where there is camera equipment and other stuff. So you have also a 3D um, scanner here. You have the opportunity to use the, the camera equipment for trick movies or whatever you like in this case. To show the opportunities you have in this space, we created our Christmas card last year about 
the idea of the physical, virtual, analog, digital space. So you, you have the same person, but he has its VR goggles. He is looking at a virtual Christmas tree and the virtual Christmas tree is decorated with the crystal boards. So this is like the VR type. The augmented reality type is that you trigger a trigger point and the tree is popped up on your screen. So these are like the, the hybrid, is, hybrid uh, spaces and hybrid approaches to what this space could be about. So you have a real world where this person is standing and he has a real experience, haptic experience of a desk. He's standing on a, on a floor, but his mind is somewhere else. So um, what we experience today, I am sitting in Stuttgart with my, my office aside. You all in front of me, I see now it's 53 participants. You sit everywhere. You sit in your rooms, you sit on the street, you sit in a coffee, you sit wherever you are. And all your backgrounds are with you. So I saw today an ad by Zoom and uh, by Teams so that they're creating now virtual meeting rooms. So this is the next step where we all like now are not sitting in our all rooms and having our own backgrounds, but we can be related to one virtual um, seminar room where we all sit together, where we all see us each other and uh, through the new software technology. So imagine this, how can we spread this further and bring it up to uh, the idea of the virtual reality, then you can say, oh, let's meet next time in a historic site and, um, and create this surrounding in the hall of an emperor and there we meet or wherever or whatever. It is endless opportunities and possibilities open up by this technology. And of course we have a physical space. The physical space can be shared into one part and another part with a very nice idea here we had, you can just lower uh, um, a screen and you, sh you part one, one part of the room to the other part of the room and you have well here different settings. So you have the arena setting, everything is open. You can have a two groups presentation, one group, the other group, you can project to this screen, you can move it up, you can project to this screen and have also two groups. You have an open space where all the, the furniture is set in place. You have also a session for 30 persons because they can sit on these arenas or you have the ape rock giving the name to it to explain that social behavior of people is an interaction on rocks. So when you when you go into a zoo and you see the apes, how they find their communication method, they're sitting on these natural settings. And um, and this is this is one part of their social life. So what we created here is um, a box. And this is, of course, a furniture already made by a Finnish company. So we use this as um, we have it in two of them on one of the smaller ones it's called Beatbox by Martela. And how, this is how it works as arena. And tuck, this is how it is closed. So you have the opportunity by just a very, very small touch of your hand you can use it as an arena or it's just away and you have the space free. And of course you had casters here so that you can move it inside the room wherever you like. So this is the 
um, a screenshot from the opening on 7 December. So it was the opening of the first part of it. This is the, the Ministry of uh, Cultus and Schools in Hamburg, Mr. Thies Rabe. And this is the project group um, of the Institute for Learning and Schooling. And they, they perform, like, um, like I said, of course, to Corona and the pandemic, they have all their masks. And uh, this is how it used. So a next thing is um, you're not only performing, you're not only learning in a way, you also have to use a space where you can concentrate, where you have to think, where you have to think and share this new knowledge. And this has been here in this transitional room from performative communication and this will be the Fab Lab. So in this transition room, there is the thinking situated. So you have different sitting um, methods. You have these, sorry, you have these um, photos or um, seats which have an open side and a closed side. So you can open the side or you can you can turn it to the open side and have a communication possible or you turn yourself like this and you have a more concentrated work on your laptop on your um, container um, or you find your own setting on the other side you have this box made by a very high um, acoustic absorbing material. It's called um, Uphauf and uh, it's made out of um, re reused and reconfirmed um, PET plastic bottles. And um, for this material, in this way of creating a cave, you have a very, very strong acoustic effect. It is more than necessary, but while you have a different experience in this part and in this part, you lower your voice here and it gets another, let's say, effect of communication just with the material, just with the setting. And you can enforce this by this type of furniture, which I will explain right here. So you can create two learning groups, one, two, because this is a closed back of the sofa. And you have also another two um, screens you bring down and they part this part from the open part and the transition from this part. So you can have also another opening. You have opening here, opening here. The sofas have their back. So you create a means of conference. You have these proofs where you can sit. You have, you're sitting on the sofa and this space leaves untouched. The same here, you have three learning groups. It's one, two, three, or you have one, two, three, and another one because you turn the backs that one is sitting here, one is sitting here, one is sitting there. Then you have also the single workplaces extended or you have everything open. This is how it looks uh, when it's done. You see the working group, you see it is what the December the 4th um, it, installation was ready. The smart wards were in function. It's still a cable left um, and the, the lights were not on, but they were very proud of the, of the, so they make their own photos of it. And I got a shared photo of this. This is more like the official setting where you have the, the, um, the seats, the sofas, 
and the acoustic box. You see here again the threshold space, you see the green space, the box, and so on. So going further through the room, you, we come to the area where you make things. So it's not only thinking, not only performing, but now you're working with your hands. This is this part. Working with your hands and physically working, analog working is in the means of the library. So you have haptic books, so you can touch them and fool your brain also with the haptic reading and physical reading. You can have these corner here for sitting and reading and you have these boxes as a presentation module for things, objects you created in the Fab Lab. In the renderer um, time, here was no screen. It was extended by uh, workplaces. In reality, there is now another 86 inch smartboard, but you will see it just right now. So you see here, this is the space as it is now. You have a presentation lighting. You have this ceiling lighting. And uh, this was a very, very big effort we, we created in, in this space to introduce human-centric light into a, a school setting. What does it mean? So human-centric light fulfills the, the circle of the daylight. So when you, when you see the first light of the day, it's very red, less height, and then it turns to more brightness, to more whiteness, and in the middle of the day, it is the brightest and lightest light. And then the sun sets and the light gets redder and less quantity. So this circle of the day with different light colors and different intensities is built up by the sensor, sensor setting light in these light sources. So it's a LED um, behind this frosted um, plastic and creates a smooth atmospheric light in approximately the same as the daylight outside. So outside and inside should be more or less the same. And this is controlled by light emitting sensors. This is controlled by um, the, the gearboxes of the LEDs. And of course, you can have the opportunity to have a physical analog switch to switch it off. Because this is one thing we forgot in the beginning that um, they said, oh, it's very nice controlled by the sensors, but how can I switch the light off? So of course, in the end, it will be also having a physical switch. So here you see the, the black stroke, it's the 86 inch smart board, just an image of such a smart board. Um, more or less, it's the same as a blackboard or a whiteboard, but you have the opportunity to, to choose your strokes, your colors, and, um, and so on. But it is just another tool for interaction. So momentarily, you see it is used just like a blackboard or whiteboard, but to feature it with other connecting medias. So when you have here a little robot created in the Fab Lab, and this little robot is set into another setting, and then um, you see it on the screen in another atmosphere, in another surrounding, and this is also interacted with other means in the, in the room, then it gets a digital way of interacting different technologies. So, this is just one part of it, use it as a black or whiteboard, but to connect to other means 
then it's creating a digital learning setting. So this was the proposal of the workspace. You had, we had the, um, the task to um, put places of different 3D printers. We had, when you remember the, the platform of all the modular boxes for presentation, you can store them all here and leave this space for another performance, whatever you want. Here, this was the, the competition entry to show that this wall is used as a whiteboard, presentation board and a magnetic wall. So you can use this whole wall. So it's not only part of the wall, it's the whole wall, which is covered with a foil where you can write on, where you can project on and where you have magnets you can use there. And this is how it looks right now. You have here the wall, um, wall set project, projector to create an image on the board. You can write on the board um, and it is just the whole wall with this um, covering. Here you see again, it's, it's now a different, different light set because it's darker outside. Um, you have the same controlled light here and you have some um, um, focus light on the different areas you want to work here. So this is just a, a setting we had. Here are the 3D printers. Here is a, is a camera. Here was um, starting to set up um, the preparation of a trick movie, stop motion movie. You have some analog material brushes, paints, um, glues, scissors, paper, whatever you like. And what I like very much, so they took in our competition entries where we all described what we can do in this room. And they took it here as a introduction to new um, members of the lab to see what all they can do in these rooms. Now we come to the complete um virtual space in the area it's a black box this is why we called it holodeck um and there you can have this is here they have the access here and uh, the entry here so you have a not a not a closed room it's all black you have the whiteboard here with the whiteboard, light board, the light board and the, and the camera here, you have the box for podcast. And um, this is how we took it in the rendering. So we thought we can have a, a full glass as the light board, but in reality, it is more like a desk with the light board. Uh, where, where the, the teacher or the professor or the student uh, can place some pens and um, and work on it. So, what is a white? What is a light board about? A light board is a means of creating um, effects as you were writing on a blackboard, but you're writing on the glass and the camera takes your writing and your face and it's shifting um, 180 degrees so that the writing you write, the one who wants to see you, sees it in the right perspective. So this is the, the podcast uh, um, recording. You have another sofa. Um, this is nothing special, it's just the technology. But the light board technology is um, something really special. Here you see a, a screenshot um, I took from um, the net. You see the teacher writing on the, on the glass and by the frame around where there is light, LED light, strip light, the writing gets illuminated and the camera switch it to the other side so that now everyone can see the teacher and what is written on the board. So this is one, one good tool to create your own lesson, 
your individual type lesson that the teacher has its own individuality of teaching, of writing on the boards, and uh, it is spread digitally to wherever the, the students are. Coming to the, the last space in the area, and um, when I look, um, I'm pretty much in the time. So one question of all the um, participants in the, in the process told us that it is not only the, the digital stuff and whatever we can achieve with it, we also have to have in this, in this laboratory something life, living. And that's why we created the green space with the theoretical background of the means of biophilia. So the notion biophilia, which is expressed by the philosophic um, teacher and professor Erich Fromm, 1974. Biophilia is the passionate love of life and all living things. It is the desire to promote growth, whether it's a person, a plant, an idea, or a social group. So this is, this is such, a, such a strong quote telling us that we are still human beings, that we are still believed to nature, belong to nature, that we still has to have the connection to life, the connection to nature, and, um, and the interaction with the real nature and remote learning, teaching, communication, so you have to be always aware that you have to, to sit or to stand physically on earth and belonging to this. So that's why we created this room where we have the sunlight coming through the windows. You have real plants planted in uh, different pots and you can have a setting like a meeting or you can have a setting like different workplaces to chill and work in your time. So this is the, the last image. Um, plants have to grow. They are not, not ready for a photo right now. And um, I want to thank you very, very much for your listening and participation. And I hope that we meet soon in this place. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mr. Pierre, uh, and for you and for uh, all the participants.